to uh, our Maryland Heights family uh, and to anybody else that might be watching this morning. Um, we are back in the building. Last week we had another parking lot service, um, which I thought went very well. Thank you to everybody who came out to that. I thought it was wonderful. It was a little little windy, but, uh, but that's okay. I think Callista ended up in a, a parka or something uh, that uh, I think Steve provided. So anyway, uh, no, that was wonderful. I want to thank uh, Chuck and Martha Ludwig uh, Martha came up and put together our, <clears throat> our binders with our, with our songs in it. That was very helpful. And then Chuck worked overtime putting together the sound system and making sure that that all worked well. Um, Chuck, if you keep it up, you're going to become my favorite elder. So, uh, which reminds me, uh, Steve Klosky's here with us this morning. And uh, I want to thank him for being here, um, as well as a lot of the usual suspects. So uh, uh, thank you for joining us this morning, um, and thank you all for being here. Last week... Scott uh, talked about uh, the Israelites uh, leaving, uh, leaving Egypt or leaving Pharaoh's uh, army uh, behind. He talked about the challenges that, were faced, that we were faced with in front of us and the challenges behind us. Um, but uh, God ultimately made a path uh, through the Red Sea for the Israelites. And um, I don't know about you, but the longer that this thing that we're living in drags on, the more I feel like the Israelites after they, they cross the Red Sea. It seems like every day we're kind of stuck in this monotony, uh, and we get uh, we get brought down by by a lot of uh, by a lot of a uh, lot of things, and we kind of stop focusing on uh, on the prize, and we, we lose sight of uh, what we're you know what we're ultimately uh, going toward. Um, sometimes we get uh, or I know I get tired of eating the same thing every day, uh, so in that way we're also probably like the Israelites. Um, but we also we just face an uncertain future. Um, but this morning, um, I want to encourage you uh, that if you are, like Elvis says, if you are tired and so weary and you can't uh, go on, this morning, I want you to join in with us in our worship. I hope that this time is encouraging for you. I hope, again, it's a reminder of what our prize is, and it's a reminder that our God will ultimately deliver us from whatever we're going through, uh, even though, again, our future is a little uncertain. Um, so thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, let's continue in worship together. Bye. 
And the angel of the Lord appeared to Moses in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. This is holy ground. We're standing on holy ground. For the Lord is present, and where He is, is holy. This is holy ground. We're standing. is fairly empty. Uh, I, in my heart, can see each of you sitting out here. Uh, Jim Martin's over here, and he still can't hear what I'm saying, but I'm glad he's over here. And uh, we have Donna and Bruce over here, and uh, it's such a joy to know that even though we're separated by distance, that we are connected from one another. And I appreciate Heath's intro. I'm just amazed that Heath remembers what I preached on last Sunday. I don't know that he had to go back and review the Facebook uh, service or not, but that's not what amazes me. I'm amazed that he's able in one comment to bring together Moses and Elvis. Now that's got to be an amazing accomplishment. So Heath, congratulations for pulling that together. Uh, so we're going to talk about Moses today. Uh, he lived early on a rather ordinary life. He was uh, shepherding his father-in-law's sheep out in the desert. 
He was married, he had uh, a son, Gershom was his name, which means foreigner, because Moses felt like a foreigner, distanced from his people and his God. When uh, all of a sudden one day Moses comes across this site, there is this uh, bush that is inflamed and yet it is still green and alive and it puzzles Moses. So he, he goes over to it and uh, from there he hears a voice calling him, Moses, Moses. And he replies, here I am. And, and here's where God says, take off your sandals because the place that you are standing is holy ground. Uh, we sang that song this morning. I appreciate bringing in that verse because we oftentimes sing that song without really reflecting on this moment that gave birth to it, uh, a time when, when God showed up and made what was very ordinary, very extraordinary. Uh, it's reflective of another time, a similar time, when Joshua had led the people of Israel across the Jordan River into the promised land, but between them and the land that they were to conquer was this well-fortified city of Jericho. And as, as Joshua uh, stared up at the double walls of that city, wondering how in the world they were going to take this city, he meets this, this man coming toward him on a path. And he has his sword drawn. I know that had to send shudders down his spine. And so he, he asks the man, are you on our side or are you on their side? And that's when the man answered, neither. I am a captain of the army of Yahweh. And Joshua fell down before his feet. And the man spoke and he said, take off your sandals because this is, this is holy ground. Holy means something special, something that was made sacred because God was present. It was an ordinary bush that Moses saw. It was uh, an ordinary path that Joshua walked on. But when God made his presence known, it became anything but ordinary. It became holy. We read those stories. I read them at least, and I wishfully dream of a time when God may do something that astounding in my life or a, a, a burning bush or an angelic being appearing before me. And, and yet I think we read those stories from an idealistic standpoint because this was not um, everyday experiences even for Moses or for Joshua. Remember Israel had been in Egypt for 400 years without much of a word from God before Moses heard his voice there at the burning bush. And Joshua had traveled with these people grumbling along the way all throughout the wilderness for 40 years before he met this captain of the army there outside of the walls of Jericho. The truth is that these events were not ordinary for them. The very fact that they're recorded is a testimony to the fact that, that these are astounding moments. But when they, when they saw them, they knew exactly what to do. The text says that they, they fell down, they bowed down, and they took off their sandals. That's a curious response, I think. I mean, if I walked into your house taking off my shoes, you'd probably question me. But, but for a Near Eastern worldview, it is a sign of respect when you enter someone's home that you would take off your shoes. In fact, even in Eastern religions today, when you go into their places of worship, you are expected to take off your shoes when you go in there. It is a sign of respect and honor for the people. It's also a sign that says, I am relinquishing what is mine. Probably the most important thing you could have on a journey is a good pair of shoes, and I am giving them up as if to say, everything that I have is, is uh, worth giving away compared to the moment of meeting you, of experiencing you in this worship. I've long since stopped telling God what he will and will not do. He tends to make his own decisions and he doesn't inquire of me along that way. But there are two points that I want to make for you and I to remember today. First of all is this, God shows up in unexpected ways 
in unexpected times. It might be the birth of a child or the death of a loving parent. It might be moments when someone reaches out to you with just the perfect words of comfort or assistance at a time of need. And it might be even moments like this when although separated from our, in our own homes, we, we have this very palpable sense of connection and fellowship in this uh, live streamed worship service. God may not show up in burning bushes anymore. I'm not gonna tell him what he's gonna do, but know this, he still shows up. A and when he does, it is an opportunity for us to stand back and just look on in awe and wonder and to humble ourselves and, and fall to our knees and just worship and experience this God who does show up. We grow jaded in life. Sometimes it's because of age. Sometimes it's because of busyness. Jaded to the point that we just assume God's not going to show up. And when we stop looking for his appearance, he tends to comply with that. But, but it is the possibility of looking at today and tomorrow and, and the events of our lives and, and wondering when and where God's going to show up. The possibility of seeing him at work in our lives, of witnessing the amazing that he has to offer, of being a conduit to show the, the holiness of God to other people. What, a, what an awesome opportunity and one that, that we should look for, that we should long for. It is from one event that really all those future possible holy moments stream. That other time when God showed up, born to a, a virgin young girl, as a young boy going to the temple and confounding the scholars there, of healing sick people that, that doctors had already given up on, of, of inviting people who, who thought they would never be part of an accepted crowd, of inviting them in to be part of his fellowship, of teaching in a way that caused those who heard them to say, we've never heard anything like this before of, of raising people to life again after they had died and even himself not, not succumbing to the death that others wanted for him but, but coming back to life again in victory and in power. When Thomas heard about the risen Lord, he said, I'm not going to believe it. Until I can see it for myself, touch him myself, I'm not going to believe it. And then Jesus shows up. Shows him the hands wounded by the nail. Shows him a still fresh wound in his side where a spear had pierced. And to that, Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. The text does not say that Thomas took off his sandals, but I have a sneaking suspicion he probably did. I want you to know that that moment recorded in scripture was not just for Thomas's sake. It was for me and it was for you. To remind us that even in this modern world that has all but given up on the, the powerful working of a God who lives in the spirit realm outside of this, to remind us that even today God shows up and we should long for and look for those opportunities and stand back in awe and wonder and maybe on occasion take off our shoes. To help you get that realization even more vividly, I'm excited to share with you an opportunity for a group Bible study uh, where we never come together as a group. Uh, we're going to begin this week studying through the Gospel of Mark. If you'll go to our website uh, and click on the video Bible lessons and go to the one labeled Mark, uh, you'll have some instructions there and some guidance. First of all, you'll see 
uh, each week uh, a reading for that week. And the readings are about a chapter long, and we encourage you to read through uh, those readings. It won't take you long to do that each week. Just read through that reading once or twice during the week. There's also a, a, a PDF document that you can download that has some, some thought questions to go along with that. So we encourage you to be thinking about that passage too and, and what are the implications of it and what does it have to teach us and, and what questions does it bring up in my mind and, and what do I want to know more about it. And then the great exciting thing is that we have uh, a video teaching that goes along with that. Francis Chan, who is a well-known preacher and teacher, has a brief 10-minute teaching sections from each story. And these teaching sections have been filmed um, in the Bible lands, in Israel, in Galilee, in Capernaum, and Jerusalem. They've been filmed on location. So although we can't be there, we can see there the places where Jesus actually walked and did those things. And those are available free of charge for you on rightnowmedia.org and all that information is, is there on our website. And then you can go and you can watch that 10 minute video and see and hear inspiring teachings that, that hopefully brings this story to life so that we can stand in awe of that experience. And then we've got the opportunity to meet together for a teleconference on Zoom on Wednesdays at seven o'clock. And we've been doing this for a while for the Chosen series, but that has concluded. And so we invite you to, to get online with Zoom and join us at 7 o'clock. If you don't want to say anything, you don't have to. You can just come and listen. But, but to join with us, and it has been a joy to be on these teleconferences and seeing people that we know and love and, and hearing their thoughts. And you may say, well, I, am, I, am, I can't handle that technology. But we are committed that everyone who wants to be involved, we will find a way to get them involved. We have a team of people who will help you get the technology worked out and make it work for you. It's not hard, and I bet 99% of you can do it on your own. But if you need the help, we're here to help you do that because we want you not only to be engaged in this group study together, from the Bible text to the, the videos you watch on Right Now Media to the Zoom conferences, we'd love you to we'd love for you to be involved in all of that because in all of that I'm convinced that God's going to show up and that in ways unique to each one of us we will have some of those awe-filled moments. To give you a little taste of that I want to conclude with a brief video clip that introduces the series and after that we'll continue with our worship and our communion together. Mark chapter 1, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, I am standing in the Jordan River right now. This is where John the Baptist was baptizing people and preparing them, giving them a baptism of repentance, saying, do you understand who's about to come? Look, this is not just another human being that's going to show up. What would it feel like to stand in front of your creator? God, I pray that as we pursue and we read this book together and we journey through, the life of your son, God, that we treat this as sacred, as holy, 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 like no other news on the earth, God. Help us to see that everything else is so ridiculous compared to this one great truth of you becoming man, dying on a cross for all of our sins, rising from the dead. Teach us to be fascinated with the good news of Jesus Christ.
may sound like a strange question, but can you remember the future? That's a question I probably have never thought about. Oh, I know I can remember the past. And we do, don't we? We remember the past vividly. I want you to think about this. What is your favorite or one of your favorite childhood memories? One of your favorite childhood memories. I have one. I shook hands with Stan Musial when I was five years old. Insignificant, but it was a favorite memory of mine. For you, it may be a pet, a vacation. It might be something that you got engaged in in terms of activities, sports, perhaps hunting. Remembering is taken for granted, isn't it? We all just do it naturally. In AD 30, Jesus went to the cross. And the night before then, he asked us to remember him. Now, I believe that that means his life as well as his death and his resurrection. But as I stand aside, you see what's on the table. Do this in remembrance of me. Why is remembering so important? Heath talked about reminders in his introduction. Security and stability comes from what we can remember. It gives us a greater sense of connection, a very, very common word right now. When Paul wrote to Timothy, what we labeled 2 Timothy, he did not forget, and that's another interesting word, he did not forget to encourage and exhort Timothy to remember. I'd like to read to you a few verses from 2 Timothy chapter 2. You then, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to reliable people who will also be qualified to teach others. Join with me in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive a victor's crown except for competing according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I'm saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. And then he writes, Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, descended from David, this is my gospel for which I am suffering, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But God's word is not chained. Therefore I endure everything for the sake of the elect, that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Remembering is taken for granted. But oh, how valuable it is. And so while we're not together as we usually are, and get to feed off the, the power that we have in our collective presence. Remember that in households all over this community and perhaps other states, there are those who are joining with you spiritually in remembering the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior. Will you pray with me? Father, it's, it's easy for us to remember things. May it never be easy to forget you. And we know, Father, that, that not being in each other's presence perhaps makes this feel a little odd, unusual. But may we understand that the spiritual connection we have as your family, as your body of believers, can be as strong as it was in the first century while they underwent persecutions and were separated from one another. I pray, Father, that as we participate in this remembrance of you, that we'll never forget the nails, the sword, and the crown, that we'll never forget the stone, and that we will never forget the glorious morning 
that you arose on our behalf. Bless us as we participate and take this bread, which is to us that body, and this fruit of the vine, which is to us that blood. And may we be encouraged, even in our isolation, that we are still connected because of your Son. I pray this in his name. Amen.
As we have our prayer this morning before we depart, a couple of reminders. Please consider all the videos that we have going on, especially the Wednesday night that's uh, starting. Uh, the Zoom discussions have been wonderful regarding The Chosen. I know that you would benefit if you will participate in that and listen to what Francis Chan has to say and then the discussion afterwards. Also want to remind you about your gifts and contributions. You have been wonderful in sharing that part of your lives with us as we uh, undergo this unusual type of worship service. And your contributions are going to be helping those, for those who have lost jobs, for those who are in some, some strange circumstances where they might need some assistance, please let us know. And those who are still having their jobs and can participate with their contributions and gifts, you are going to be helping your brothers and sisters due to that. Finally, I want to mention to you that, that uh, John Hall and Jerry Turner are doing very well due to some illnesses that they had. John had surgery in the hospital. Jerry is undergoing some blood tests and, and she's doing really well. I've talked to her, talked to them both, and they're doing very well. Your prayers are helping that situation. Do not forget them and others that we know of who are struggling in different ways uh, this week and in the future. So God bless us as uh, we leave this worship this morning after prayer. We'll have another song and then we'll depart. And we pray that this has been beneficial to you. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, we are thankful to you for all the blessings that you give us. We are mindful, God, that without you, our lives would be very different. And we hope and pray, Father, that, that what we have done today has been honoring to you and beneficial to your flock here at Maryland Heights and beyond. And Father, we thank you so much as we remember your son in what we consider to be this remembrance feast, this communion. And may our singing and may our word of encouragement from Scott lift us up in spite of the strange circumstances that we find ourselves in. We are so thankful for the way that you have taken care of us and bless those who are able to bless others and when they're back on their feet, they will find ways to bless others as well. Thank you, God, for most of all your son, for his grace and mercy, for his love and sacrifice, and for his never leaving us. We all pray this in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Over all the earth you reign.